What's going on, everybody? Derby City Card Show was set up as a dealer. My thoughts, some of the buyer's thoughts, some of the other dealer's thoughts, all included in this video. At the very beginning, you guys probably got a few real quick pictures. So let me talk about that real quick. My camera was mainly focused for the challenge that I had out there for an hour stationary. And I didn't even use the footage for the video prior to this on the challenge because I didn't want to have to hit like 5x to go through a video showing how many people walked by, either didn't look at this sign, looked at it, and just walked away. It, it would have wouldn't have been fun for a video. It would have been like 10 minutes to fast forward to the winner. So what I did is at the beginning of the show, I did walk around real quick, had my phone with me. And I'm going to pull up so I can personally see the pictures that I've shown already in the beginning of the video. So, talking about picture number one, the Kenny Pickett rookie. Wanted to buy it. I really did. I wanted to buy at least one autograph rookie, Kenny Pickett. Sales on this were $130 to $150. So I waited until the dealer had nobody there. There was nobody around. And I kindly went up and I was like, hey man... You got a room one, they're like, well, I'd probably go 200 on it. And I'm like, the sales have been like 130, 150, same exact cards. Some have been a little bit nicer, the swatch. I'll give you, you know, the high clump of 150. I just want one for my collection. It wouldn't budge. Only one there, too, would not budge. So, you know, couldn't close the deal on that one at all. The Luca optic that was on there, I believe those were 2021. There were two of them there. I figured they were like five or six hundred dollar cards. Boy, I was off. They were like seven hundred ish. Was well, thinking about doing a package deal with the one table, and then I was like, "Dream, you gotta stop, boy. You you spend way too much money into the year. Just hold off, hold off. You need to sell. You need to sell before you keep buying, buy, buy, buy." So I backed off because uh, there was a couple of nice cards there, but the Luca one just it looked really nice. I like the way the optic silvers were, and the way that was like kind of like the old fashioned. Um, Guys, that 83 Don Russ kind of look with the bottom on to it. I'm trying to remember. I think it was like 83 uh, Don Russ baseball. Kind of had that yellow line down there. Could be off by a year. But then I went to another table. And that was the last picture you guys seen. The Curry Auto, the other Luca Auto, uh, the Kobe Auto, LaMelo Ball, Zion, uh, PSA 9. Really nice cards at that table. I was really interested. There were actually two Jordan Autos there. One was for two grand. That's what they were selling for. I just, I backed away. End of the year. <laughs> End of the year, I don't like spending a whole lot more money than I want to. And just because I haven't ran my numbers yet for the year, know how much I have to spend. Or I can't afford to spend. So it's just one of those things. So nothing personal against any of the dealers I went around if I tried to hit you up and you guys are watching this. It, it was just that I was, I wanted the cards, but it was just, you know... Even if I paid you the high comp on to it, it wasn't even close to the prices on there. So some of the other things that were noticed out there from buyers. A lot of the buyers enjoyed it. They found some great deals. I got to see some great deals come by. Got to see and hold a Willie Mays Topps rookie card a guy brought by. A couple Tiger Woods autos. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else I saw. A nice Mike Trout auto. Uh, and I think it was 2011 Bowman Sterling. Really nice looking card. It wasn't an 09, but it was the 11. But the autograph wasn't like faint onto it like you'll see on a lot of those. I think some of the other cards I got to see that brought to my table. Hmm. I got to see somebody else buy another Jordan Auto there. Steve, nice card if you're watching the video. Really, really nice card. I liked it. Uh, <laughs> he came by and I was like, oh, you brought cards with you. He just hands me his... uh. Oh, what do you call that thing? A tough box thing. And he just took on out to do a deal with somebody. And I'm sitting there like, am I allowed to open this? I guess so. He trusts me. He gave me the whole box. He had some really nice stuff in there. I was going to ask if I could tape some of it, but then I started getting busier at the table and everything. Overall, people always ask me, sell-wise, I don't think I sold anything out of my case at all. Because I just sent like 18 cards of DC Sports uh, for end of the year just to move. They've been in my showcase this whole year. So it's time to move. Uh, I think I sold a total of $50 at the show. Just so everybody's tracking. I'm not afraid to put out what I sell sometimes. I try not to if I make like two grand or three grand, say that. But 50 bucks, I'd say roughly at the show, is all out of my value boxes and stuff like that. Uh, 
A lot of other dealers were disgruntled out there. They were. It was a kind of mixed opinion from what I was getting from uh, Chad, John, and Scott. That was their show. Chad was telling me today. They, you know, a little bit mixed thing. I said, I, I enjoyed the show. I mean, did I sell a lot? No. But it's going to happen. It shows you're not always going to be, you know, selling power at the same time frame. I'm at the mentality, if it's in my showcase, why would I settle a 20 to 30% off comps when I could sell it on eBay for 12% of comps and get the money? So just one of those things right there, it always hit me in my head. I guess, I guess you could say I kind of nickel-dime stuff in a way. Some stuff I'll, I'll you know, people will buy a lot from me, I'll move down in price or they bought through the years and all that, but... Uh, with the right round way things are going right now, I just don't see dropping 20, 30% for somebody else to flip a card that I could flip on eBay or send to Zach over at DC Sports and get 15%. You know, you start adding that up, and I brought this up with a bunch of people out there, that if I did that on a $100 card, say I sold it for $75, basically we're just going to say I lost $10 in that card. If I sold 20 cards like that, it's $200 I just lost that day. It makes no sense to me. Maybe somebody out there in the comments, if you think that's just crazy, maybe I should just take the loss and get the cash. But know that I do claim all this on my uh, taxes. I have to pay sales tax. So everything I sell to shows I, for cash is recorded. So when I give somebody a price, that's including i got to pay that 6% sales tax on it yet with the uh, state of Kentucky. But I guess a lot of dealers, they don't do that, or they, you know, skim off to the side, whatever it may be out there, but I just don't do that. I don't want to be held up in court on stuff, that, you know, tax fraud or whatever it may be called out there. So when I'm taking 10% off, I'm also, you got to remember, I got to still pay 6% in sales tax to that item. That's roughly about what I'm getting on eBay for, it, you know, offhand. And you have to pay your own sales tax on eBay, too. I think here... Like third time doing the video because I didn't have my volume on last time. <laughs> and I had to redo that one twice. I'll show you guys what I picked up. I only picked up one card. Got to figure out where it's at here. Hold on me. Boom. One card. I'm not afraid to say I bought it for $220. Mac Jones downtown. Really good shape. I uh, found the guy who lives real close to me. He says, my stuff always pops up when he shows, searches for card shops. And I always have to explain this to a lot of people why my stuff shows up that way. When I used to run the uh, Elizabethtown card show out here, I had to register my business in Elizabethtown, which I now live in Vine Grove. And somehow I made like yellow pages with it and all that stuff. All right. So I explained him why and everything. He was like, oh, OK. He's like, you interested in buying any of this? And I said, listen, I said, I, the raw stuff, I'm going to have to grade. And I said, I don't, I'm not a person that likes to try to nickel and dime everybody, but if I buy this, I got to spend $50 to grade it because we have no idea where Mac Jones is, if he's even going to end by the end of the season with the Patriots. I mean, what's his name? Zappy or something like that. Could be now quarterback, whatever it may be. I said, I got to buy it and hurry up, grade it, which it's going out to be graded on uh, Wednesday. When I go pick up mail. Uh, but, you know, I told him, I said, I got to have some wiggle room in there because then I got, you know, chipped there and back. So we'll just say all of a in for 290 PSA 9 sold for 405 Take off 15%. It's like, I can't remember if we had a 260 270 somewhere around there. So that's if it gets a 9, if it gets a 10, does real well. Then, dude, if it gets a 10 on to it, next time you come around, we'll work out a little bit better if you want something out of the case, whatever it may be. But that's how you, you start building them relationships, too, with everybody out there, which is why I like card shows. You know, you get to meet a lot of local people around you and stuff. But overall, they did a phenomenal job with the show again. There's signs way out there pointing how to get to the show. Uh, nice little room in there and everything like that. You know, they do their job. They sell their tables out. They promote it through Instagram and everything else out there. It's on the Beckett venue show thing every month or every other month when they run it. So next year, again, I'm only be set up at the Derby City shows in Newburgh, Indiana. That's it. Uh, the rest of the shows I want to go as a buyer. Uh, it, it's not that I don't like setting up at card shows. It's that you see the same inventory time after time and time again. And if I set up and I only can change out three cards on my display in a week, 
you know, the same people are seeing the same exact cards, they kind of just brush by you. You know, if it was different areas, like I was going to Cincinnati, then Tennessee, then Louisville, and then over to Indiana type deal, and there was all different people, I'd probably be like, yeah, I'd do it every week. But when you're in a small, little tight area, they see the same things over and over again, you just kind of get past there. They still come up and talk to you and everything, but it's just a quick glance. Hey, how you doing? Everything going good? Doing well? But like I said, mixed on the sellers out there, or yeah, the sellers on what they thought of it. There were guys, this is no joke, uh, selling card going for $200 easy. They want $400. will not go even close if somebody wanted to buy it for $200. I know a guy wanted to buy one for $200. Exact last four sales on it were $200, like $201, $199, $203, something like that. I wouldn't take it. They ain't at $400. <laughs> uh, buyers, like I said, a lot of them found some sneaky deals out there. Bill Russell autos that were really well priced. Uh, I seen somebody pick an Anthony Edwards auto up, really good price onto it. The other Jordan auto was a trade in cash deal, really nice price. So really good show, really good show. Again, I, I appreciate them always inviting me and getting me out there every show. I, I like doing their shows. It's just really, really fun out there. And plus, they let me do the card challenge you guys see in the video before this. So really fun, really fun. All right, guys, that's it uh, on the show, really. I'm trying to think if I have anything else. I threw my notes away. I do apologize. I didn't realize my mic wasn't on earlier when I was doing the talking on the original video. But other than that, guys, take care. Have a good one. I'm out.